Now on to the starting stage. And uh, the starting stage, we are talking about uh, from establishment, which is zero day to 21 days. So this is a, uh, this is a stage uh, from zero days to 21 days. And uh, you find that uh, uh, this is a stage mainly where the plant is trying to establish it itself. If you find it is going to, uh, the young uh, or the first leaves are going to wither. And then we have emergence of new, new leaves, um, starting with two leaves initially, actually one leaf, then two leaves, and uh, developing into uh, very, uh, various leaves. And also it's a stage where you find the plant is trying to establish roots, uh, encourage roots, so that the plant is able to get nutrients from the soil. And therefore, it is a very important stage. And here we are going to look at uh, three stages or three management aspects, that is nutrition. We are also going to look at uh, pest and disease con uh, pest control, and of course we are going to look at the disease control, and also we also may look at uh, uh, watering. We are looking at the nutrition, uh, bit of it. Here uh, we may not have a lot of uh, aspects to uh, to look at because uh, the land already has uh, the manure and also has the first the phosphatic fertilizer for establishment. Here, when you're looking at nutrition, we are basically looking at uh, the secondary supplementation. And uh, secondary supplementation is usually uh, still a phosphatic fertilizer. Uh, uh, phosphatic fertilizer because we are looking at uh, this young plant establishing good root system and also good shoot system. And therefore, we are looking at uh, what we call starter, foliar feed or starter fertilizer. When you go to an agro shop, they actually call starting fertilizer, foliar fertilizer, or starter foliar fertilizers. And therefore, once, once those, those are done, uh, they are usually uh, sprayed maybe on a weekly, uh, weekly basis, but mixed with the other uh, product. So from nutrition, we go to pests. And here, we are looking at uh, a few pests that may attack the spinach crop, mainly the cutworm, and also the bollworms. And once we have uh, these two aspects, the cutworm, remember as the, young, uh, as the young plant is establishing, you find that the cutworm usually comes and then cuts along this base, and then the plant uh, dies off. And therefore, it is very important for you, in order for you not to lose uh, these crops, it is very important for you to be able to, uh, to do uh, this, establish, uh, this control. And therefore, uh, for the cutworm, we have uh, an active ingredient, lambda cyhalothrin. And once you have the lambda cyhalothrin, it's going to control uh, this aspect very well. Uh, since the cutworm cuts as a base, it will be important for the lambda cyhalothrin to be spread at the base of the, uh, of the young crop. And uh, for the bollworm, you are going to see holes uh, that are created by the bollworm as it uh, feeds on the leaves. And therefore, once you start to see those holes, then it will be an important thing to do the same active ingredient to control that aspect. You may encounter what we call leaf miner, still at this stage, and therefore it is also important to look at this stage. And leaf miner basically, they usually attack the leaves. You may find very tiny uh, lines very tiny lines, and those are created by the leaf miner, the, uh, the stage we call larval stage of the leaf miner. As they feed along the leaf, they, they leave those lines. And those lines are the feeding lines, and they feed the leaves of those lines. And therefore, it is also important to, uh, to consider and, uh, an active ingredient with abamectin or emamectin benzoate. Emamectin benzoate or abamectin is an active ingredient that uh, control the leaf miners very well. And therefore, once you have this, and uh, this, of course, we are talking about uh, scouting. Scouting is basically going to your farm and seeing if uh, you are seeing a cutworm, or maybe you are seeing these holes, or maybe you are seeing the lines. If maybe you are not seeing them, then it may not be necessary to spray the, the, the pesticides. And therefore, uh, it is a matter of uh, aspect, uh, and the aspect of scouting, as I've said. And uh, here we are looking at uh, weekly spray. And this weekly spray 
you may find that uh, a starter is important. If maybe these aspects are not there, you may omit uh, uh, using a, a, an insecticide. And the third aspect here, we are going to look at uh, diseases. And actually the spinach crop is not attacked by very many diseases. One of the key diseases that is usually attacked, uh, that usually attack the spinach, we are talking about uh, the leaf spots, the fungal blight, and also we can have the root rot. So mainly the, the three diseases. And here we are going to look at uh, the leaf spot. You may find if that the spinach leaf at this stage, you may find uh, tiny brownish spots. And those are what we are, call, we are calling the leaf spot. There may be many, depending on uh, maybe your control aspects and also the, uh, the diseases or maybe the rain when it rains, you find that they uh, multiply very quickly. And then we are going to look at, uh, uh, when, you lo when we are looking at uh, the fungal blight, you will find the margins are drying off. Mar margins are drying off of the leaf until you find that the whole leaf dries up. That's what we, we, we are looking at uh, when you are talking about the fungal blight. And the root rot, of course, you find uh, that the root, uh, for a young plant, the roots uh, start rotting. And then you find the young plant dies off. Instead of thriving and growing, you find that uh, it is dying off. So you may find that that is uh, what we are calling uh, the root rot. And also, uh, apart from the root rot, we have what we call the nematodes. And the nematodes still attack the, uh, the uh, still attack the young plants. And therefore, uh, when we are looking at uh, we are looking at this aspect, still it is a matter of scouting. Especially this two is a matter of scouting, and also uh, this uh, and also this. So once you scout, and you find that uh, and scouting is just going to your farm and looking. If you find maybe the leaf spots have started uh, attacking. You know, uh, in your next spray, which I've said is after seven days, seven to 14 days, depending on how the weather is. If the weather is too dry, then you can do 14 days. If the weather is too wet, it is raining, then you do seven days. Uh, and when you are looking at uh, the leaf spot, we are looking at uh, some active ingredients that you can be able to apply. And one of the active ingredients that you can apply in this, uh, in this uh, section, we call it uh, diphenoconazole. We also have uh, hexaconazole, and also we have an active ingredient we call azoxystrobin. Uh, you can use either azoxystrobin or diaphanate methyl. You may find some uh, brands that are mixed together. You may find maybe uh, diphenoconazole and hexaconazole together, or maybe hexaconazole, azoxystrobin together, which are still okay. You may also find the three of them mixed together, but most of the time this you are going to find it uh, as a a brand as a stand standalone brand or standalone uh, active ing uh, active ingredients some will be mixtures and that will be okay uh, for the fungal uh, fungal blight we are talking about uh, a product we call cymoxanil uh, cymoxanil is going to take care of the fungal blight uh, you may find it mixed with mancozeb which is also uh, mancozeb is also uh, a, a, an active ingredient uh, an active ingredient for pre protective uh, this is curative and therefore when you are doing the control you usually advise you can spray this week you spray this uh, these active ingredients then the following week uh, or the following spray you use uh, cymoxanil plus mancozeb so that will give you very good control when you are looking at the root rot we are looking at uh, um, uh, controlling the bacteria because mostly the rotting, the rotting will be the bacteria. You control the rotting that uh, may occur. And this usually occurs when maybe the, it is raining heavily and the ground is very wet. And therefore to control this, we usually use a uh, copper-based fungicide. And here we are looking at uh, copper oxychloride. So once you have copper-based fungicide and especially copper oxychloride, we're going to find that you are going to control these aspects very well. And then finally, on the nematodes, it is very important to control the nematodes. And the nematodes are basically new uh, 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 insects, uh, or they are not actually insects, they are, uh, they are from the class of nematodes. 
and they are usually controlled using nematicides. They are not controlled using insecticides. And they usually come to the, leaf, to the roots, uh, they lodge themselves on the, onto the roots, especially the root hair cells. And then when the plant is taking nutrients from the soil, it usually, uh, these nematodes usually uh, take the nutrients leaving uh, very little or maybe insufficient nutrients to get to the plants. And you find that the plant will start uh, deteriorating, uh, the leaves will start reducing in size, the general health of the plant will not grow very well. And therefore, when you are doing spinach, it is very important to control these aspects. And I've said you use nematicides. And uh, one of the ne ne nematicides that we have in the market is an abamectin. And here you may apply, initially when you are doing some of the nematicides are mixed in the fertilizer, um, they are mixed with, uh, uh, with the manure. So once you are applying the manure broadcasting, you, uh, uh, you, you mix the, the nematicide, especially the abamectin, and then you can broadcast on the, on the soil. And uh, when you are doing the holes, you can mix the nematicide there with the fertilizer, and then you can be able to, uh, to apply on the holes prior to transplanting. And of course, the other aspect is once you transplant, it is at the starting stage, you can do the drenching. Uh, this is your plant. It is growing. That is your plant, your spinach crop. Then you can apply at the root zone. You apply the nematicide at the root zone, what we are uh, calling the drenching. You drench at the root zone. And once that is done, then you have very good control of the nematodes. And therefore, once you have these aspects, it's going to, you are going to have a, a very good establishment as far as uh, the starting stage is concerned. When you are looking at the spray interval, as I have said, when you are looking at, at the spray interval, we look at several things. Spray interval is basically uh, the next spray. Once you spray today, the next spray is going to be seven days or 10 days or, or 14 days. How long is, is it going to take? And here we are, we are encouraging uh, between seven to 10 days, uh, sorry, to 14 days, and mainly at 10 days. 10 days is important because uh, uh, even when you start harvesting, uh, harvesting mainly is done every 10 days. And therefore, once you, you harvest and spray, you harvest, then you spray, it's usually a very good program. And therefore, uh, uh, at this starting stage, we are looking at seven days, uh, mainly due to the rains. When the rains is too much, then you're going to find some diseases such as fungal blight and leaf spot are going to multiply very quickly. And therefore, you need to reduce your spray, spraying period to seven days. And once you do the seven days, uh, you are able to control those aspects very well. The next is pests. If you are going to see that the bollworm are attacking your crop, crop very fast, and not only this stage, even the other stages, if they are attacking very fast, then you are going to to reduce your days to seven days. And the pest, uh, apart from the bollworm, you're also looking at uh, the leaf miner. And once you have the leaf miners uh, attacking, then it means you are going to reduce to seven days once you scout and you see that uh, they are attacking. So those aspects are the ones that are going to determine whether you are going to use seven days or 14 days at the starting stage. But of course, when you get to the harvest, of course, you have to do 10 days so that once you do a spray, you are going to wait for 10 days before the next harvest. And that will be a very good period uh, so that the chemical that you have sprayed can be eliminated from the plant by the, uh, from the plant, by the various system of the plant. So that after the, 10 day, the next 10 days of harvest, you plant very clean crop that uh, is uh, pesticide free.